mubyeyi urifuza guteganyiriza umwana wawe ejo heza kana mu mashuri ya Apejerwa ariyo Lisendo Ruhango ikirezi hamwe na Emero Intwari muri Lisendo Ruhango ikirezi tubafitiye amashama kurikira Cardinal Art cyangwa se bijyanye n'ubutetsi ari level 1 level 3 level 4 ndetse na level 5 food and beverage services tubafitiye level 3 level 4 ndetse na level 5 tubafitiye kandi accounting cyangwa se ibarura mari level 3 level 4 ndetse na level 5 tubafitiye nubukanishi bwa modoka mu byiciro bikurikira auto engine technology level 3 auto transmission and control system technology level 4 automobile transmission and control system technology level 5 tubafitiye nubwubatsi mason level ya gatatu level ya kane ndetse na level ya gatatu tubafitiye tourism ubukera rugendo level ya gatatu iya kane ndetse ni ya gatatu turabibutsa ko tubafitiye n'ikiciro rusange tukome tukome Naho muri Emero Intwari tubafitiye amashami y'umwaka umwe akurikira Automotive Technology ubukanishi bwa mamodoka level ya mbere hair dressing ubwiza no gutunganya umusatsi level ya mbere tailoring ubudozi level ya mbere masonry ubwubatsi level ya mbere muri aya mashuri yombi tubafitiye bari mu binzobere harimo nabaturuka hanze y'igihugu tubafitiye kandi n'amacumbi y'abakobwa ndetse naya bahungu abanyeshuri bacu bakora ingendo shuri mu gihugu ndetse no hanze ya tubaho umwanya wo kwimenyereza umwuga mu bigo bijyanye ibyo biga dukorera kandi graduation abanyeshuri basoje amasomo yabo aya mashuri aherere mu mujyi wa Ruhango hafi ya gare ko bindi bisobanuro ngando hamagara kuri 0788836219 cyangwa se 0722336618 nana duhamagara kandi kuri 0788836219 cyangwa se 0782228225 Nana dusura kuri website y'ishuri www.apejerwa.ac.rw umuri mukozwe neza utuma batugirira ikize na it is a session of uh, building setting out in a level 3 masonry my name is Zera Rampor as trainer in sector of construction, subsector masonry. We have now the session or the topic of today which concern more about this picture. Now, observe this picture in order to discover the topic of today. Also, we have a picture in order to discover the topic of today. Remember, the previous session was about setting out the building on a set profile board. Last previous session, we have seen how to set the profile board. Now, we are going to see the next session. Remember, I was told you. I was told you about the next session. Now discover the topic of today. Here there is a question to answer which will help you to discover the topic of today. What have you seen on the picture? What is the name of the work have you seen on the picture? Can you guess the topic of today? Now, the topic of today, as we have the model called the building setting out, competence setup of the building, learning unit 2 called set a profile, but we have also another topic of today called the dug out foundation trench as required at the construction site dug out foundation trench as required at the construction site remember the topic is dug out the foundation trench as required at the construction site by the end of this topic or trainee 
should be able to know correctly methods used in building the trench on the construction site. Now collectively the principle to flow when dugging the trench on the construction site. Now collectively advantage and disadvantage of mechanical excavation as required at the construction site. We will see more about this in order to achieve well this objective of this session. Remember, the topic of today is about excavation. Excavation is the term used when dugging out or removing if or soil for trench or, or foundation or basement. When we make excavation, it is a process where we need to dug out or removing the soil in the trench or in the foundation or when in the basement remember the basement is a lower part of the building that lower part of the building must be in the ground so you have to remove all unwanted soil in order to put where you are basement and also foundation is the lower part of the structure where is it under the soil so you have to move now the soil this process is called the excavation that is excavation when you make excavation you will need to make what you call a tree hole remember we have seen about three hole in the first running unity, a trio hole where you make a trio hole as the hole for checking the information of the soil. So you have to you have to create a trio hole on the soil in order to know so many information about the, your soil where you are going to make a excavation. Some information you that include is the thickness of each strata, the thickness of each strata, the layer of the soil. You have to create, make a trio in order to know the thickness of the strata or the layer of the subsoil. Also, in trio help you to know composition of each strata, composition of each strata. If the soil has a strata, then each strata has its composition. I like clay. I have seen the, last, the first running unit, clay, silt, sand. So you have to know this strata is sand, clay, how much or how many of the percentage that to contain in this strata. When you make a material, you have to know it. The size of various particles, size of various particles, to know whether it is a clay silt, the size according to the dimension. Water table level. When you make a material hole, you know also the water table level, where there is a water. When you make a tree hole, you see the where there is a water on it, the subsoil. Also, when you make a tree hole, you take the soil and make examination either on the site or on the special laboratory. And that, you know, the depth of conservation depends on whether when you make the test or examination of that soil you will know the depth of excavation the depth of your excavation the depth of your excavation also it will tell on the type of the natural foundation we are that for that soil what what are the type of that soil when it is a hard soil Understand about that you will need a shallow excavation. If it is a salt soil, you will need a deep excavation. Then also you, we, we consider also the height of superstructure. Your building will be high and then you will need to 
male a dick. If it is a simple building, it is a shallow. Now also you have to know according to the type of foundation you reconstruct, what we call artificial foundation. When you say artificial foundation, is that man-made foundation? That man-made foundation. So you will make excavation according to that type of natural foundation, height of superstructure, and the type of uh, the foundation you will do, or the type of foundation you will construct. That is the principle of uh, excavation. When you excavate, you have to consider this principle. Also, in excavation, you will need the method of excavation. We have two methods of excavation. You can make excavation, you, the main excavation is about removing the soil. You will remove the soil using hand or you using machine. So, when you remove the, the soil by hand, that we call manually, you use manual tools. Manual tools like a hoop, pick ass, uh, spade or shovel, a bucket for carrying the soil, and so on. But when you use uh, a machine, excavation by machine, it is you will need different type of machine. You will need a different type of machine in order to excavate your soil or to excavate your trench. So, that's when you use machine, it is what you call excavation by machine or mechanical excavation. It is a mechanical excavation where we excavate using a where you excavate using a machine, it is what you call mechanical excavation. When you excavate using by hand, you is called manual excavation. When you make mechanical excavation or excavation by machine, you will need several machine or plants. Here there is a different type of machine you can use when you make a mechanical excavation. One is commonly known by everyone called a bulldozer. Bulldozer machine. A bulldozer machine is a large, powerful tractor fitted with a caterpillar. Track having a vertical blade at the front end for moving the if. It has a vertical blade, as you see here, a vertical blade for moving the if. This is called a bulldozer. Also now we have what we call excavator. Excavator is a heavy construction equipment used for removing soil from the ground. So you remove the soil from the ground. All movement of excavator are accomplished using hydraulic fluid and the rotating platform. So, Excavator, as you see here, it is this machine. It has what we call a bucket. This bucket, with that we remove the soil. It is not a bread as a, it is not a bread as a bulldozer. Now it has a, a bucket. So there are another called mechanical shovel. Mechanical shovel from shovel, like a traditional shovel. Where we you remove or you take the soil and put in the wheelbarrow, but here we have what we call a what we call mechanical shovel. A mechanical shovel is now used for taking the soil and wheel it only in the truck. So this is a mechanical shovel. There are also what we call bakata. A bakata. You see here, yeah? a bakata is different from excavator. 
it is in front there is a, uh, they have the same as a excavator but it is different in the back that is the difference between the bar cutter and the excavator see it work so back cutter also is called a back hoop back hoop it has a back hoop also called a rear after or back cutter rear after it means back no now it is a back cutter it is piece of excavating equipment so this is the different from excavator because they have a as the same but it is different because it has a back hoop here also there are what we call trenching machine trenching machine now you understand the word trench it means it is a trench machine it is a machine that you use when you make a trench Remember, after set the profile board, you will need it to excavate the trench. So you will use this when you trenching the your foundation trench. Remember when when you are excavating. When you are excavating, you use two methods. You can use hand excavating by 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 hand, or excavating by machine. So when you excavate by hand, it is what we call manual method, and when you are excavated by a machine is what we call mechanical method. A mechanical method is the one that we use by machine. It has now advantage and disadvantage. Mechanical method has an advantage and a disadvantage. Remember, manual method it is the one where we have used our traditional, our traditional tools. So on mechanical equipment, we have uh, advantage and a disadvantage. The first one, advantage of mechanical is economical. You can ask me how is economical. So is economical because the cost involved is very low if a large quantity is excavated it is economical if a large quantity is excavated but not always economical if for example if a small quantity is excavated so when you have a small quantity you will use manual method because a machine can be cost and we have uh, our traditional tools which will help you to make a manual method then increase the rate of working it increase the rate of working mechanical method increase the rate of working it is free the working and so reduce labor force. Do you understand here? Increase the rate of working. It increase the rate of working. Spread up working and so reduce labor force. It means the worker will be speed up and then the rate labor force will be reduced because we use a machine. And then You will now also have a dis disadvantage of mechanical disadvantage of mechanical excavation. One, the plant or machine is machine used is expensive. Normally, to buy a bulldozer or any machine or any plant we use here, it is not for all people or all companies. It is for a rich company. 
for buying the plant. So, but if you have already buy, it is now the worker, it is very speed up. But it is now the disadvantage because the plant is expensive. The second, it needs much maintenance and spare parts. Because it is a machine, it will need so much maintenance. Also, the plant will need a fuel. Also, we will need a spare part. But when we are in manual, you will use only our labor force. No fuel, no spare parts. So it means now this is the disadvantage of mechanical excavation because we need so much spare parts, so much maintenance, and so on. So now I can ask every trainee. Our objective is now achieved the way. Remember, at the beginning we have, at the beginning we have an objective. At the beginning we have objective. Remember, we have the objective, no correct the method used in digging the trench. No correct the method used in digging the trench. Can you now tell us the method of digging the trench or the method of making excavation? No correct principle to flow when digging the trench. No collect three principle to flow when digging the trench. What, what are the information? What, what are the depend on information for digging the trench? No collect three advantage and disadvantage of mechanical excavation. Advantage and disadvantage of mechanical excavation as required at the construction site. Remember, this is our objective. But we have also the assignment to answer. Before the assignment, remember, this topic was about excava excavation. Now, the next session will be method of timbering foundation trench. Next session will be method of full timbering foundation trench. Here we have an assignment. One, what are the method used? What are the method used in dugging trench on construction site? What are the methods used in dugging trench on construction site? What are the principles to flow when dugging the trench on the construction site? What are the principles to flow when dugging the trench on the construction site? List five plants used in excavation. Are you able to answer this assignment? So I think each trainee are able to answer this assignment. Trenches and excavations are common at many construction sites and are considered one of the most dangerous construction operations. Digging a hole in the ground seems simple, but it is estimated that over 100 deaths per year occur due to cave-ins and other excavation hazards. 
digging can be a major cause of concern unless you know proper techniques and the OSHA rules for excavation and trenching. Never dig until you know it is safe. This video will discuss the various aspects of excavation and trenching and will cover the following. OSHA requirements, hazards, working safely in and around excavations and trenches, general requirements, mobile equipment, and the competent person. OSHA Regulation 1926 Subpart P is the relative standard for trenching and excavation work. This OSHA regulation applies to all open excavations made in the Earth's surface and requires workers in trenches and excavations be protected from the hazards that can occur in the operation. Prior to any excavation or trench work, the OSHA requirements should be reviewed and followed. Companies are responsible for knowing and following current federal, state, and local laws, implementing an effective health and safety program, and ensuring all affected employees work safe and follow rules and regulations. By definition, a trench is considered an excavation, but there are differences between the two types of openings. An excavation is any man-made cut, cavity, trench, or depression in an earth surface formed by earth removal. A trench is described as a narrow excavation made below the ground that is deeper than it is wide. Trenches can be up to 15 feet wide. The most feared of all the hazards is the possibility of a cave-in. All excavations are hazardous because they are inherently unstable. Workers can be seriously injured or killed if the sides of a trench collapse. Unsafe trenches are the major factor in many trenching hazards. Trenches don't have to be deep for accidents to occur. Serious injuries are also possible in shallow trenches that are less than 5 feet deep. A cubic yard of dirt can weigh up to 2,700 pounds and is capable of moving at 25 feet per second. A cave-in makes very little noise and gives very little warning prior to the collapse. Some causes of cave-ins include vibrations from equipment or traffic in the area, weight of equipment near the trench edge, weight of excavated material, referred to as spoil, too close to trench edge, poor soil condition, and rain or water which weakens the trench walls. If more than one condition exists, then the risk of collapse increases. Sometimes, excavations are considered to be confined spaces. Asphyxiation due to lack of oxygen in an excavation can occur. Inhalation of toxic fumes released during a dig is also possible. Drowning, electrocution, explosions, and fire are other possible hazards. And finally, when working near the trench, the risk of being hit by a vehicle exists, especially if you are near traffic. Pre-job planning is vital to accident-free trenching. Safety cannot be improvised as work progresses. A key factor to safety includes performing a job site analysis and identifying hazards and possible hazards before work begins. Always take the appropriate measures to eliminate or reduce the risks of hazards. Any employee who is going to work in or near an excavation must be trained. A competent person must be on site at all times to oversee every aspect of excavating and trenching. On work sites, this person is generally the supervisor. 
A competent person is one who has training in soil analysis and in the use of proper protective systems. The competent person is knowledgeable about trenching and excavation standards, must be able to identify hazards and unsafe conditions, and must have the authority to stop work when unsafe conditions exist. The competent person requires a greater level of training and experience than a normal worker. Any trench or excavation that is five feet or more deep requires the use of a protective system. Some contractors require the protective system to be in place in all excavations over four feet deep. If excavations are made entirely in stable rock or are less than five feet deep and a competent person has determined that there is no potential for a cave-in, a protective system is not needed. Excavations and trenches deeper than 20 feet or below the base or footing of a foundation or wall require a protective system designed by a registered professional engineer. A protective system is a method of protecting workers from collapses of material that can fall or roll into an excavation or trench or from the collapse of adjacent structures. Always finish excavation work as quickly as possible. Finally, it is imperative to barricade, protect, or cover an excavation or trench from anyone who may come close when workers are not present. Before digging, the competent person must evaluate the soil conditions. There are four types of soil classifications. Stable rock, which is the most stable. Type A, which is considered very good. Type B, which is fair. And Type C, which is the least stable and is considered very poor. Soil classification is based on results of at least one visual and one manual analysis by the competent person. In a visual test, the entire excavation site is observed, including the soil adjacent to the site and the soil being excavated. The evaluator also checks for any signs of vibration. It is common for the competent person to walk the entire site at least twice and observe the areas that will be excavated. A manual analysis consists of physically testing the soil and looking at different consistencies and attributes of the soil. Common tests are a thumb penetration test, which involves pressing the thumb firmly into the soil. The thumb penetration test is the least accurate testing method. A dry strength test, which involves crumbling a sample of soil in your hand. A plasticity or wet thread test is when one attempts to mold a moist sample of soil into a thin thread approximately one eighth of an inch in diameter by two inches in length. And finally, one can use a pocket penetrometer or hand-operated shear vane to determine the unconfined compression strength of soils. Select and construct the appropriate protective systems in accordance with OSHA standards. The system used is based on soil classification. Protective systems include sloping, benching, and support systems including shoring and shielding. Sloping an excavation is when sides of an excavation are inclined away from the excavation so as to prevent cave-ins. The soil condition and the angle of repose determines the degree of slope required. Benching is a means of excavating the sides of an excavation to form one or a series of horizontal levels or steps, usually with vertical or near vertical surfaces between levels. If soil conditions warrant and the trench is more than four feet deep, a support system structure of underpinning, bracing, or shoring, which provides support to an adjacent structure, underground installation, or the sides of an excavation must be used. Two types of support systems are commonly used. Shoring, which is the process of placing metal or wood panels inside a trench against the soil walls and securing them in place with bars and vices. Proper shoring prevents cave-ins. The second system is the use of shields. The shield system is a structure that is able to withstand the forces imposed on it by a cave-in. Shields used in trenches are usually referred to as trench boxes or trench shields. Prior to digging, it is imperative that all underground utilities, such as gas, electric, 
phone, cable, water lines, etc. are located and marked. By calling the nationwide one call number, 811, various utility companies will send out representatives to locate the various utilities' lines. While the excavation is open, any underground utility lines must be protected, supported, or removed as necessary. All necessary precautions must be taken to prevent damaging underground utilities. If an underground utility is damaged, notify the utility operator immediately. If the damage results in the release of hazardous gases or liquids, both the utility operator and appropriate emergency response officials should be notified immediately. Call 911 if appropriate. Before starting to dig, plan and implement traffic control as necessary to protect workers and the excavation. Although it is not common, the exposure to harmful contaminants can cause problems for workers inside and around trenches. Workers must be protected from exposure to harmful levels of atmospheric contaminants, oxygen deficiency, hazardous fumes, and toxic gases. Ensure adequate ventilation in the trench or use proper respiratory protection if needed. Always have on hand emergency rescue equipment when a hazardous atmosphere exists or can reasonably be expected to exist. This equipment includes breathing apparatus, safety harness and line, or a basket stretcher. Trenches deeper than four feet must have a means of entry and exit. This is usually provided for by a ladder. Ladders should extend three feet above the top of the excavation and be located within 25 feet of workers. Structural ramps that are used solely for access or egress from excavations must be designed by a competent person. Use ramps made from the earth as a means of egress only if a worker can walk on them in an upright position. If water accumulation is present or possible, use pumps or drainage system. Never enter a trench that has water accumulated in it. Daily inspection is required by the competent person. This inspection should occur at the beginning of each shift, following any rainstorm, and after any change of condition that could compromise the trench. For example, the movement of any equipment along the edge of an excavation. Place spoil from the trench far enough away as not to cause a hazard. The weight of the spoil has been known to cause cave-ins. A competent person should direct the spoil's placement. The placement should be at least two feet away from the trench. If the worksite does not permit a two-foot setback, then the spoils should temporarily be removed from the area. Use a retaining device, such as a trench box, which extends above the top of the trench, to prevent spoils and equipment from falling back into the trench. Falling loads can also be a hazard for workers. Workers should never work or stand under loads that are being handled by lifting or digging equipment. Workers must stand away from a vehicle being loaded to avoid being struck by falling materials or spillage. All workers on an excavation site must wear hard hats. Safety glasses and steel-toed work shoes are also recommended. While loading with equipment such as backhoes or dump trucks, an operator may remain in the cab as long as the equipment is properly equipped with a cab shield or adequate canopy. Mobile equipment should have a warning device, such as a backup alarm. Steps should also be taken to protect equipment from falling into excavations by installing barricades and using stop logs. The use of hand or mechanical signals only works when everyone on the site is familiar with the signals and knows what they mean. Crossing a trench on its surface should be discouraged. If trenches must be crossed, appropriate walkways or bridges with guardrails must be provided. In the event of an accident, follow all safety procedures. Alert the competent person, appropriate emergency response personnel, necessary utility companies, and others according to your company policy. Never attempt to rescue a fellow worker during a cave-in. A second cave-in is very likely. Leave all rescues to trained rescue personnel. This video has discussed many aspects of trenching and excavating. 
Remember to follow all safety rules. If a situation seems unsafe, alert the competent person and stop work until it is safe to continue. Never take shortcuts or try to skip necessary safety procedures. Finish excavation work as quickly as possible in a safe manner. Remember, you are the one working in the trench or excavation. It is your life that may be at risk. So this is the end of our session. Thanks for your kind attention. Remember, my telephone number is 0783880064. You can contact me when there is a question to explain to you. Thanks. Mubyeyi urifuza guteganyiriza umwana wawe ejo heza kana mu mashuri ya Apejerwa ariyo Lisendo Ruhango ikirezi hamwe na Emero Intwari muri Lisendo Ruhango ikirezi tubafitiye amashama kurikira Karina Art cyangwa se bijyanye n'ubutetsi ari level 1 level 3 level 4 ndetse na level 5 food and beverage services tubafitiye level 3 level 4 ndetse na level 5 tubafitiye kandi accounting cyangwa se ibarura mari level 3 level 4 ndetse na level 5 tubafitiye n'ubukanishi bwa mamodo Mubyiciro bikurikira Auto Engine Technology Level 3 Auto Transmission and Control System Technology Level 4 Auto Mobile Transmission and Control System Technology Level 5 Tubafitiye nubwubatsi Mason Level ya gatatu Level ya kane ndetse na level ya gatatu Tubafitiye tourism ubukera rugendo Level ya gatatu iya kane ndetse ni ya gatatu Turabivutsa ko tubafitiye n'ikiciro rusange tukome tukome Naho muri Emero Intwari tubafitiye amashami y'umwaka umwe akurikira Automotive Technology ubukanishi bwa mamodoka level ya mbere hair dressing ubwiza no gutunganya umusatsi level ya mbere tailoring ubudozi level ya mbere masonry ubwubatsi level ya mbere buraya mashuri yombi tubafitiye bari mu binzobere harimo nabaturuka hanze y'igihugu tubafitiye kandi n'amacumbi y'abakobwa ndetse naya bahungu abanyeshuri bacu bakora ingendo shuri mu gihugu ndetse no hanze ya tubaho umwanya wo kwimenyereza umwuga mu bigo bijyanye nibyo biga dukorera kandi graduation abanyeshuri basoje amasomo yabo aya mashuri aherere mu mugi wa ruhango hafi ya gare ku bindi bisobanuro nando hamagara kuri 078836619 cyangwa se 072236618 nana duhamagara kandi kuri 078836619 cyangwa se 072836618 Nana dusura kuri website y'ishuri www.apejerwa.ac.rw umurimo ukozwe neza utumba batugirira ikizere